Tell you what, you know, I remember five years ago, our talent pool was somewhat limited, wasn't it, man? God is really blessed, and we have some wonderful voices, some wonderful musicians now. And I tell you, you know, we just should give thanks for them. It's time. Well, last night, we were looking at uh, Luke chapter 2. And uh, this morning, we're going to look at uh, Matthew's account of the birth of Christ, which varies a little bit. You know, I believe God wanted not just one viewpoint, but more than one viewpoint of the birth of Christ. And you know, the thing is, God brought to mind the things that touched the heart of uh, Matthew and, and brought those to his mind, and he wrote those down. And then Luke, the same way. Now, Matthew was one of the twelve, the original twelve, if you remember. And uh, scholars say, and I'm not certainly not a scholar, but scholars say that Matthew was written from the viewpoint uh, of the Jews. And uh, that Luke, Luke was a, he was a physician, he was a teacher, uh, and uh, a doctor, and he traveled with the Apostle Paul on uh, his uh, missionary journeys, and he was not Jewish, and he wrote from the viewpoint of a Gentile. So, you see, we get God gives us different, different uh, takes, different views. And you know, God uses your personality and your potential. There's something unique that God has built into you to uh, make your service different, you see, than someone else's. So today, we're going to take a look at... Matthew's viewpoint, okay? So let me begin reading here, and, and folks, we're not going to be here a long time. I know you have families and uh, events to go to with families. This is Christmas. It's time for families, and we want to, to honor that, but also this is the time that we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That says, <laughs> here in uh, Matthew chapter 2 is where we're going to begin reading. It says, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east. Uh, some versions refer to them as kings. Uh, some, uh, we refer to them many times as wise men. Uh, but they were all one and the same. These Magi came from the east to Jerusalem and asked. Now they go to Jerusalem, which is the... the uh, a capital of the nation of Israel, Judea, and and they where else would they go but to the palace to look for a king? Where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers, of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. Now this is a quote from the Old Testament book of Micah, chapter 5, and verse 2, which prophesies that Jesus Christ would be born in Bethlehem of Judea. Listen to this. This is a quote from Micah. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. And is not Jesus called the good shepherd? Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. This would give him an idea of how old the child was, you see. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, the old conniving goat that he was, he sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. Now, the, the Magi, they had one viewpoint of Jesus. They were going to uh, worship and pay homage to and bring gifts to the king of the Jews, a king that was prophesied in the Old Testament would be born 
in Bethlehem of Judea. Now, Herod's viewpoint, he saw that any king born out of his family would be a detriment to his rule. So he had his own motive for wanting to know where Jesus was born. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child and his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. You know, it is a little, you know, humorous, I guess, uh, the way we sometimes picture things in our minds. You know, in all of the Christmas plays we see portrayed, for one thing, we see three wise men. The Bible says in no place that there were three. Chances are there were more that came on this, this, uh, this trip. You remember a few Sundays ago, I preached on the Good Samaritan. You remember what happened? There was a man who evidently was traveling alone outside the city, and, and he was set upon by thieves. In Jesus' day, in their, they would not travel in small groups particularly those who had wealth, who had property, they would travel in a large enough group that thieves would think twice before they set in on them. So it stands to reason that there was more than just the MAGA traveling. These were evidently wealthy men, whether they were kings or whether they were prophets or priests or whatever they were, Wise men, uh, they had some substance, and that's evidenced by the gifts that they brought. The gold, the frankincense, and the myrrh, which were of most costly gifts that could be given to Jesus. And so it stands to reason that there were more people traveling with them. Now I say all of that to say this. If we can just think about who else may have been traveling with these, these men. Last night, uh, our, our band did a, a song that Brother Robert said that, was, uh, that I love. Well, I'm going to tell you a little bit this morning about why I love that little song, The Drummer Boy. Some of you have heard it. That song was written in 1958 and first recorded in 1958. I was seven years old at that time. And for Christmas, in 1958, I got a little record player. Now let me tell you what, by today's standards, it was, you know, caveman type stuff. I mean, it's, it was just a little box, about like that, had a lid on it, and all it would play was 45 RPM records. They don't even make records anymore, I don't think. But they certainly don't make 45 RPM records, and that's all it would play, and so you'd plug it in and you would turn it on and you'd have to wait a minute. And the reason you had to wait a minute is because it had old vacuum tubes that amplified the music that was made by the needle riding around on the groove that had the music on it. And I don't remember, I've got all four or five different records, but there's only one that I can remember that I got on that Christmas, and it was the little drummer boy. 
Now let me tell you what, I have fond memories of the little drummer boy. Now if my mother were alive or my daddy were alive in here, they may not have fond memories of that. <laughs> Because it seemed that I played it over and over and over again. I loved it so much, and I have loved it since. But I want you to think that those three wise men, as they came, or I say three because that's so ingrained into our psyche that it's three. But however many there were, they came and they brought to Jesus gold, frankincense, and myrrh. It stands to reason that the others that were traveling with them were probably not so wealthy. And I like to think, and I, the Gospels bear out, that Jesus just did not come to minister to the wealthy. In fact, Jesus came, he said, to seek and to save those that were lost. And that goes across all the social strata. Wealthy or poor. And it stands to reason that these men were traveling and they had an entourage, both for safety and also there had to be people to kind of wait on them hand and foot. They were wealthy enough to have somebody do the cooking. They were wealthy enough to have somebody that cleaned up. They were wealthy enough to have somebody who would make music for them, entertain them. And so it's not hard to imagine that this was a much larger group than just the wealthy wise men. <coughs> and so that's the idea behind this song, The Little Drummer Boy. Now I want to read to you, and I'll make some comments on the lyrics. I don't know if you, you know, you get so caught up in the beat and, and the music that sometimes in songs we miss the lyrics. Nowadays, you can't understand the lyrics, at least I can't. But, uh, of course, that's the same thing my daddy claimed about the rock and roll music. So, you know, it's generational. But here are the lyrics. Now, there's one phrase that is repeated over and over again, and I'm going to have to repeat it. And please, get, just get past this. And that's the phrase, pa ra pa pum pa It's the sound of the drum. Come, they told me, parumpa pum pum, a newborn king to see, parumpa pum pum. Our finest gifts we bring, parumpa pum pum, to lay before the king, parumpa pum pum. So to honor him, parumpa pum pum, when we come. Now listen to this. Jesus was born in a manger. He was placed in a livestock crib. He was not wealthy. And so the little boy says this. Little baby, parumpa pum pum. I am a poor boy too. I have no gift to bring. That's fit to give the king. Shall I play for you? On my drum. Now here's my point. There's probably not many, there may not be any of us here in this congregation today that can place before the King of Kings and Lord of Lords anything of worldly value. We may not have wealth and gold and frankincense and myrrh or today's equivalent to that to give to Him. But you know what? That's not what God is looking for. If he wanted that, you know, he's the creator of it all. And he owns it all. He does not need that. He does not have to have that. What he is wanting from us is our 
our service. Our gifts to Him are what we have to give, not a certain monetary value. So think for just a moment. Here's this little boy. And these kings that he was employed by and traveled with, these wealthy men, had just placed before Jesus some of the most expensive gifts that money could buy. And the little boy says, all I have is my drum. Shall I play for you? Now as we end this year and start another, I hope and pray that each and every one of us will not think of, well, I can't serve God because I don't have all of this wealth. I don't have the talents to sing from the stage. I don't have a beautiful voice. I, I you know, I, I'm not quick on my feet to think and have things to say. God does not ask that of you. All that God asks and wants of you is what you have been given to serve Him with. This little boy had this drum, and he could play it, and so he did for the honor and glory. Jesus. Now listen to this. Mary nodded. Yes, play. The ox and lamb kept time. I played my drum for him. I played my best for him. You know what? That's all that God has. Is not how much or how rich, all he has is for your best, for him. That's the way we honor him. And listen to this. Then he smiled at me. It pleased the Lord. He smiled at the little drummer boy. Now, through the wonders of modern science and electronics, I have for you the original recording of the little drummer boy. And that is if I can get it to work. You know, y'all had trouble getting the thing to work. So we'll see. Now, now you know, if, if, if Robert was here, he could probably hook this up to the sound system, but I'm going to do it the uh, hard way right here. There we go. Listen to the words.
you know, just as uh, the little boy learned, God was not asking for a wealthy man's gift. All he'd ask is for us to give what we have and to do our best for him. To give our best. You think about that today. And as we come to a new year, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord God, as we come to you this morning and worship you, Lord, just help us. Both in the remainder of this year and the coming new year, to promise you that we will serve you with what you've given us to serve you with. However insignificant that may seem to be to the world and even to us. But Heavenly Father, we look forward to the time that we stand before you and because we served you and gave you what we had and we did our very best. You will smile just as you did for this little boy. As a baby, you smile. And you will say, well done, good and faithful servant. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for being here now.